Okay, welcome to part two. Okay. Now we're going to talk about two false religions, and we're going to go through it and get into some kind of detail. But the things to look for, remember what I said, when someone comes up and says, my religion's the true religion, what are we looking for? Resurrection, and uh, if it's works. If they've turned faith into works, or if they just flat out have works, you have to do something to be saved other than um, the plan of salvation, faith through faith to find God's grace and then you ask God to save you, He saves you, the true plan of salvation. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. So the first one we're going to talk about is Mormons. I've had uh, brothers and sisters in Christ talk to me about being ex-Mormons and how it's basically an occult, and it is. But they don't always tell you everything they believe at first. They try to hide behind the King James Bible. I'm going to link something uh, down below and it's a cartoon sketch. I'm not supporting the, the video, the channel that it's on, I mean, but the video is based off of what would it be like if the door-to-door -door Mormons that came door-to-door -door actually preached what they believe and they're using the Mormon book and then they got Pearl of Great Price. We're going to get into those. What would it be like? And it's a pretty, at first it's funny. The first time you see it, it's like, that, that can't be true. And you start to laugh a little bit. You find out it's true and it's sad. A lot of people going to hell, all these Mormons that refuse to give up this occult and these false beliefs, they're all going to hell. All right. So Mormons, let's start with uh, how it got started. Right. Founded by Joseph Smith Jr. 1830. There was no such thing as Mormons before 1830. The Book of Mormon is one of the books that they use Doctrines of Covenants, there's the second one, and Pearl of Great Price. They don't tell you about those three books and what those three books truly believe because those three books go against the King James Bible. They teach a false Jesus, false gospel, and works and stuff. We're going to get into that. But they use those three books, yet they don't bring those books door to door. It's just the King James Bible. And they try to deceive you. Oh, we're King James Bible believers. No, they're not. And we're going to find out. Okay. So what's their belief on God the Father? I like it on here where it says they carry a KJV Bible. Okay, They use the Book of Mormon, the Doctrines of Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price, and they carry a King James Bible. And that's so true. They just carry it. They don't believe in it. They don't follow it. So what do they believe about God the Father? God the Father was once a man. That just blows the Godhead out that they don't believe in the Godhead but became God. So he was once a man that wasn't God, and then he became God. Mm -hmm. He has a physical body as does his wife, Heavenly Mother, not Godhead. Okay, that People say they don't believe that. You'll have Mormons on the very bottom that says we don't believe that, but that's what it says in those three books that they just mentioned. Book of Mormon, Doctrine of Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price. Like I said, I'll link that video. Um, so that's what they believe on God the Father. So they don't believe he was God fully and completely all the time. It was, it was just he obtained Godhood. He was just a regular man who obtained Godhood. And God the Father is married. He has a wife. Okay. And it teaches, they teach that worthy men one day may become gods themselves. Hence, he, God, was one, God the Father was once a man, but he obtained Godhood. If he did it, we can do it, right? So they're already attacking the Godhead, which means they're not going to believe in the real resurrection. That's how you know they're fake. But we're going to keep going. The Lord Jesus Christ is a separate, lowercase g, God from the Father. He's separate. Okay. He was created as a spirit child by the Father and Mother in Heaven and is the elder brother of all men and spirit beings. They actually teach that the reason God the Father has a, a wife is because they're having spirit babies, and that's you and me. But Jesus was the first one created, so he's the elder brother. He's the big brother of all of us. Jesus was married. His death on the cross does not provide full atonement for sin, but does provide everyone with resurrection. So they did... They, reject the full account of Jesus dying on the cross and Jesus saying it is finished. Oh, he, that's not true. His blood can't wash all your sins away. 
Okay? But they believe in the resurrection. He does provide everyone with resurrection. Not that he resurrected, but that he provides everybody with resurrection. So once again, they attack the Godhead, and now they're saying that his blood's not enough. So these should be red flags. Okay, The Bible teaches it is finished. Jesus' blood can wash all your sins away because he resurrected and he's God fully and completely. Okay. That's how he was raised from the dead, proving that he is God and it's God's blood. So what do they think about the Holy Spirit? And like I said, I'm not mentioning everything as far as page this, page that. It's in those three books okay, that they believe, that they use. They only carry, they only carry a King James Bible. So the Holy Spirit... The Holy Ghost is a, God, is a God, lowercase g, God, separate from the Father and the Son. And the thing about Jesus Christ is, remember what they said about God the Father. He was once a man that obtained Godhood. So Jesus is a separate God from the Father. How is that possible? Because he was a man that obtained Godhood. So here we have the Holy Ghost is separate from the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is a fluid-like substance, something physical by which the Father exercises His influence. They don't believe in the Godhead. And as we saw with the Lord Jesus Christ, they don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And how do we know it's, it's going to be based off works? Well, it said that His death on the cross does not provide full atonement. So how to be saved? This shouldn't shock us, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, resurrected by grace, but saved, exalted to Godhood by works. Oh, God resurrected him by his grace, God the Father, but we're only but he was exalted to godhood by works. Okay? Uh, but we're saved by uh, works, including faithfulness to church leaders, Mormon baptism, tithing, ord ordination, marriage, and secret temple rituals also known as temple work. When you get high enough into the Mormons and you get into the temples and everything, it's Satanism. It's what really goes on in there. No eternal life without Mormon membership. It's not about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and how he died. It's you've got to be a member of the Mormon club, the cult, the Mormon cult. Okay? So we see it's works. So they attack the resurrection and they attack uh, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, the blood. It's all about works. Now, I threw some of this stuff in just for, you know, gee whiz. What happens after death? Eventually, nearly everyone goes to one of three separate heavenly kingdoms, with some achieving godhood. Someday you can be a god of your own world. Um, and like I said, watch that video. They talk about the planet of Kolob and all this. It's just, you're like, where do they get this? They don't get it from the King James Bible, so that's absolute truth. They just carry the King James Bible. They don't believe in it. Apostates, people who are not part of the Mormon church, and murderers go to outer darkness. Right. Now, murderers, you've got to be careful with that in the sense that, like the Muslims, if you actually read it, they believe that you're only a murderer if you kill another Muslim. If you clear, kill someone that isn't a Muslim, it's not murder. Right. The Mormons are kind of the same way. If you kill another Mormon, that's murder. If you kill someone that's not a Mormon, they're a Gentile. They deserve to die if they reject being a Mormon. So, as we read in there, and this is just one example of a, of a so-called Christian religion, because the world calls Mormons Christians. They're not Christians. They don't follow the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. Okay. Next one we're going to talk about is Jehovah's Witness. Okay, we're going to go through the same things. We're going to start where, where, where it was created, or when it was created. Charles Taz Russell founded in 1852 to 1916. Okay. Later, Joseph R. Rutherford took over okay, and helped strengthen the foundation of this false religion. Began in 1879... In Pennsylvania headquarters in Brooklyn. Why there's different dates, I think they threw it in there because that's when it was being created and built up. But it was actually, okay, we came out in the open and founded it in 1879 in Pennsylvania headquarters in Brooklyn. 
the headquarters are, yeah, it was, uh, I'm sorry, I got to read this right. Began in 1879 in Pennsylvania. The headquarters are in Brooklyn, New York. Key writings are all Watchtower publications, hmm. including the New World Translation Bible only. Reasoning from the scriptures, you can live forever in paradise on earth. Watchtower and Awake magazines. Okay. They have their translation, New World Translation, and the thing that's funny about it is uh, Jesuits were on the translation team. It's a Jesuit Bible. It's a Catholic Bible. Um, and anytime you try to show it to these people, it's an occult. It's brainwashing. They're told, you're, you, everybody outside don't have truth. I'll listen to a Jehovah's Witness and correct them. Okay, you said that, I'm going to correct you with the Bible. You said that, I'm going to correct you with the Bible. And with them, you can correct them and show them in Revelation where God the Father, God, died, who was dead and now liveth. You can prove to them that, that Jesus Christ is God, but they won't hear it. Why? Because they go mainly off their Watchtower publications. What man says, not what God says. So what do they believe in God the Father? One person, God, called Jehovah. No Godhead, Jesus is the first thing Jehovah created. Here we see it again, Jehovah created Jesus Christ. He's not God fully and completely. And you have these people that just stand for the Trinity. They're in the same boat as these people. These faith alone, believing in the Trinity and reject the Godhead. They're in the same boat as Mormons and now they're in the same boat as Jehovah's Witness. All right. So Jesus was created. He's not God fully and completely. Remember, Mormons, he obtained Godhood, but he wasn't God originally. The Lord Jesus Christ, what do they believe about Jesus Christ? Jesus is not God. Before he lived on earth, he was Michael, the archangel. Now, if Jesus isn't God, can his blood wash your sins away? Absolutely not. If Jesus isn't God, how could Jesus raise himself from the dead? It didn't happen, the resurrection. So they attack both again. Jehovah made the universe through him. On earth he was a man that lived a perfect life. After dying on a stake, not a cross, he was resurrected as a spirit. His body was destroyed. There you go. He wasn't resurrected. Jesus is not coming again. He returned invisibly in 1914 in spirit. Did you guys know that? Very soon, he and the angels will destroy all non-Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. Who cares what Revelation says where it comes to the Jews, you know, the time of Jacob's trouble and the 144,000. We're going to see here they pervert that. Uh, it's supposed to be from the 12 tribes. So as you can see there, they don't believe Jesus is God. So they attack the Godhead and um, he didn't raise, his body was destroyed. He, didn't, he wasn't raised from the dead. They attacked the blood. It becomes, as we can see, it becomes about works. Holy Spirit, you can already tell that. It's going to become about works. Impersonal Holy Spirit is not God, but rather an invisible active force from Jehovah. Okay. And they keep misusing the word Jehovah. Um, because it's not the way it's mentioned in here. They're not believing in the real God. Now, how to be saved according to the Jehovah's Witness? Be baptized as a Jehovah's Witness. There you go. Works. Baptism is an outward showing. It's an ordinance. It's something you do to show the world or your brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm saved. It's an outward showing. You don't have to be baptized to be saved. The baptism that's talking about there with... Uh, Water and with fire, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. It's talking about getting saved and God, ba Jesus baptized you with the Holy Ghost, not physical water. And the fire it's talking about is hell. You either get baptized with the Holy Ghost or you get to go to hell and be baptized with fire. Okay. Most followers must earn everlasting life on earth by door-to-door -door work. You'll see them sitting out there, just sitting out there, and they've got their little stand with all these... Uh, Watchtower pamphlets, because that's what they truly follow, and they're just sitting there. They're earning salvation, according to them. According to the Bible, they're on their way to hell. We just read that in Galatians. If you have to earn salvation, 
Jesus' death is in vain. Salvation in heaven is limited to 144,000 anointed ones. There we get that number. It's supposed to be about the Jewish people, but no longer they pervert it. This number is already reached. <laughs> get, let that sink in. What happens after death? The 144,000 live as spirits in heaven. The rest of the righteous, the great crowd, live on earth and must obey God perfectly for a thousand years or be annihilated. They don't believe in hell. Okay? They believe you'll be annihilated. So as we can see in these two examples, this is just two examples. I could have done the Catholic Church. I'm trying to see about maybe talking with the brother and maybe doing a live video or something like that. But bottom line, look into the Catholic Church. They attack the Godhead with their Trinity, and it's about works. You have to keep the Eucharist to be saved. And Catholics were also created at one time. Catholics were not there all the way back to the death of Jesus Christ, where you have Peter and Paul and John preaching the true gospel. The Catholic Church doesn't go all the way back there. It was created at a certain time period. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, believing in vain, as we see, what does it mean to believe in vain? You're believing in a false Jesus, a false Jesus whose blood's not good enough. You have to do works and earn salvation, whether you turn faith into works or you flat out say you have to do door to door, um, you got to do baptism, you got to, you know, you got to be circumcised to be saved, you got to eat only clean meats, you have to observe the Sabbath, being brought back under the law, you be your belief is in vain. And that was what's going on in First and Second Corinthians. Um, they have been told that there's no resurrection. And they were living in, in sin and sin and sin. That easy faith alone, you know, you can be saved and just continue in your sin and sin all you want. Mm -hmm. And then, so we got that. Godhead, uh, attacking the resurrection, and then saying you have to do good works to be saved. Turning anything into works where it's something that you are doing. That's what turns it into work. It's something that you do to get saved. You did it. You're saved. You've earned it. I went through faith to find God's grace. And at that point, I asked God to save me. God did the saving. I didn't save myself. My repentance didn't save me. My belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross didn't save me. Me confessing both in prayer didn't save me. I asked God to save me and He saved me. I didn't do anything to earn salvation. All right. So beware of false gospels. You know, people trying to get you to believe in vain. Okay. Ephesians 5, 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Okay. Don't let people deceive you with vain words. Everything we just read there about the Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, is all vain. It's all worthless. They're all going to hell. They reject the real Jesus Christ, the true plan of salvation. They reject the King James Bible, God's perfect written word. Romans 16, 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own bellies, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Just like with Satan, subtlety. You want the world? I'll give you the world, but worship me. I'm a Jesus that lets you have the world. I'm a Jesus that conforms to you. You want to earn salvation? I have a Jesus for that. You want to turn faith into works? I got a Jesus for that. You don't want, you don't want to believe in the resurrection? I've got a Jesus for that too. It's like almost like you're going to a, a store to shop. Come here, shop. You know, we have a Jesus that, that fits you. You know, what you want to believe and how you want to live. So don't be deceived, brothers and sisters of Christ. Continue to stand for the true gospel, the true plan of salvation, that, God's, that Jesus' blood that was shed is God's blood. Remember, feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Jesus raised from the dead. The Godhead raised Jesus from the dead. When you're newly saved, you might not get the Godhead part, but you do get this when you get saved, that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh, and he died to pay for the sins of the world. And when you come to him broken, it's because you're saying Jesus died for your sins, personally. 
And you believe the death, burial, and resurrection, the resurrection proved that he's God manifest in the flesh. That's part of the gospel you believe. After salvation, God will open the scriptures to you and you start learning about the Godhead. All right. But you need to stand for the true plan of salvation. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. We're going to leave you with this verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You stand for the true plan of salvation, your labor is not in vain. Your work isn't in vain. You stand for the true Godhead of the King James Bible that proves the true resurrection, that Jesus is God fully and completely. Your work isn't in vain. Stand, 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 brothers and sisters in Christ. So always stand. Never faint. Don't faint. Don't falter. And when you do start to faint a little bit and falter, be zealous therefore and repent. Okay? I know that that talks about salvation, but it's also in the life for instruction and righteousness. It's in the life of a Christian. When you start failing the Lord in any way, shape, or form, fall on your knees and repent ASAP so you can get your life back with the Lord, right? And get back to walking and doing the work of the Lord and living for the Lord. So, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Hi. Hello? We're representatives of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mormons. Our prophets have sent us to deliver a message given from God. Prophets? Message? Yes. We're here to tell you that God appeared to the prophet Joseph Smith in 1820, and he chose Joseph to restore the truth. He did. Yes. God told him Christianity had become completely corrupt. So, you guys aren't Christians then? Oh heavens, yes, we're Christians. After all, the name of our religion is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But you just said Christianity was all wrong. It is, but because of Joseph Smith, we know ours is the only true church on the earth. So, what's so bad about Christianity? Well, you see, everything you know about God is basically wrong. First of all, God is not a spirit. He's a perfected man with a glorified body of flesh. Huh? We believe a long, long time ago, on a planet far, far away, our God, Heavenly Father, was just like us. He was born mortal. Eventually, his efforts were rewarded, and he was exalted to Godhood, joining the other millions of gods in the universe. Millions of other gods. Yep, maybe even billions. Oh, that hurt. Oh, sorry. As he grew up, he worked hard at becoming perfect, just like all other gods did before him. Today, Heavenly Father lives on a distant planet. Next to the star, Kolob. He lives there with our Heavenly Mother having spirit babies. That's us. Yes, that's us. We all live there as spirits before we were born. We just don't remember. We come here to Earth to get a chance to work towards perfecting ourselves, so that we'll be worthy enough to be exalted as gods. So you're saying you're going to become a god? Well, well, yeah, I hope so. And just what do you mean by perfect yourselves? Well, we have to be completely faithful and obedient to our church and its rules. Rules? Well, just a few. Basically, just no drinking, no smoking, no gambling or swearing, no coffee, or tea, no watching rated R movies, fornication, stealing, or lying, no shopping on Sundays, dress modestly, go to three hours of church every Sunday, read the scriptures, believe in Joseph Smith, get baptized, give 10% of your income to the church, don't question the leaders, serve in the church, and most importantly, temple, temple work. work. Temples? Is that what you call your churches? No, no. Temples are special buildings used only for secret ceremonies and rituals that are needed for godhood. So what do you do in these temples? Well, first we get anointed as kings and priests in heaven. Then we receive special holy underwear that we must wear for the rest of our lives. Uh, special holy underwear? Yes, special because they have sacred symbols on them that give us protection. Then we're given a new name, the one that we're going to be called in heaven. Then we're taught signs and passwords called tokens. We have to memorize them to be allowed into Heavenly Father's presence. 
If we show the signs to the guardian angels and tell them the passwords, they might let us in. And if we've earned it, then we will become exalted as gods. And can start creating and populating our own worlds. So just what is the secret sign and password? We, we, we can't tell you. We swear oaths not to talk about them. So they're secret? No, no, they're sacred. But you can't tell me? Right. Then that's a secret. Well, fine, it's a sacred secret. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is the only people who become gods are Mormons? What about everyone else who died hundreds of years before your temples were even built? Well, that's the best part. We do all of the ceremonies on behalf of those dead people, so it will count for them in the afterlife. Yeah, we get baptized for the dead, do the signs and passwords for the dead, and even do marriage ceremonies for the dead. Did I say something wrong?